there's something about the song which just gets people going and I just see it across generations. I did actually think uh, that it was a piece that was, going to, that was going to stay around for a long time. I personally certainly didn't foresee that our initial mus musical statement with Take On Me would overshadow almost everything else that we've done uh, since. That's something that, you know, you start by embracing it because of its success and then you start fighting it because of its success and ultimately you start embracing it again and thinking, wow, how lucky we were to have a song that, that has meant so much to people that they still play it after 30 years. Yeah, it just, it just doesn't quit, does it? It's always the one they pick to cover, and it's always uh, the one they want for the movies, and you know, it's always the first one the fans learn to play or make a YouTube video of. <laughs> Kind of cool to see, you know, some people, they focus on one part of the song and forget about the other part and they kind of, you know, there's all types of versions, you know. Well, I never thought I would get to make a pop video, but I loved it so much that I actually performed it on television. Uh, admittedly not actually singing my words. I couldn't have chosen any other song because of its sort of vitality. It's, you know, it, it brings joy to my heart. The Weezer thing is almost like a remake of the song and the video for a, a young generation. I mean, I love Stranger Things, so there's like a lot of things I already liked about the idea. I thought Weezer is a, a, a cool outfit. I guess what it is, is it's just like showcasing something to a new public, which is something that we will always be thankful for, especially when it's cool people doing it. I mean, it's, you know, it's done uh, slightly tongue in cheek, I would say, but, but, but in, a, in a cool way. Well, maybe it's not tongue in cheek. Maybe I, I just think it is. I mean, for us personally, it's always nice to hear like a totally different version. You know, like a totally different take on it. Musically speaking, personally speaking, I think um, Aqualung's version, which I believe was recorded for Grey's Anatomy, um, really stands out because it delivers a different emotion than what we delivered with the song. I mean, it's underlying, there's a sort of underlying melancholy uh, side to the song because of its structure and, and, and minor key. But that's, that's, that's someone taking a song and really turning on it, its head and, and making something new and beautiful from it. You know, this sort of It's a very untraditional chorus. It's not really a sing-along chorus. I mean, you, you sort of know how it goes. If you're a punter and you're, and you're asked to sing it, you're, you're gonna veer off on some strange version of that chorus. It's not really a all together now type thing, you know? To me, the, the, the best bit that I like is when they go into halftime. So they're going, take me, take on me, to do, 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 do. Yeah, that that's where I flip out. It was written specifically to showcase Morton's range. Do you hit that note yourself? I can hit way higher than that. It's because I sing like a girl. He's a bit more of a man. Can I hit it? Hell no. My voice. I think Tom could probably hit it. I'll sing her. 
Um, he's got a pretty ridiculous range. I could not hit it without being hit. Definitely not. I, I would not try and be Morton. Uh, he, he's uh, inimitable. He's almost laid back about the fact that he's just climbing and climbing. And you're like, oh my God, he's up in the, in the clouds. Um, and I, I love that in, in his delivery of it. Aha, uh -huh, I heard about, really, because my first ever tape I was ever given was Hits 4, and on it was Aha, uh -huh, The Sun Always Shines on TV, and I've been trying to rip off that song ever since. Um, and that's my favourite song. Um, but Take On Me is pretty good. I've got my tape. Here we are. That's my hunting high and low cassette from when I was, I guess, I guess 10, because it's 85, isn't it? So I was 10. And uh, yeah, I've actually started to wear out the words where you hold the cassette as you put it in and out of your machine. So uh, I think that's why it has endured because it's, it's brilliant music and, and that's never gonna change whether you know, fashion changes or, or you know, whatever. It's just a brilliant song. It's, it gets lots of plays on, on YouTube, not just because people wanna watch the video, but just because they wanna hear the song. It's difficult to know what actually makes Take On Me so special, um, but it is. It's just an entity unto itself. It has a universally appealing riff. The video has enhanced it greatly. Everybody seems to love it. It's just gone on and on. It's timeless. It's, it's melancholy and it's, it's sort of buoyant melancholy. Because melancholy is about things that value, are valuable to you. I think it's a genuine piece. I think there is something very timeless about it, and I make this prediction, which is that people will still be listening to it and watching the video in 30 years' time. Uh, another 30 years, they're going to add up. Oh, I wish. I mean, <laughs> that'd be nice. You know. Can you see yourself in 20 years' time? Playing take on me on those <laughs> synthesizer pro. Yeah, really. Sounds good, no?